Hello and welcome. In today's video, we're going to be setting up AdGuard Home, which is going to help us block advertisements across our network for all of our devices. Let's jump right in and click on how to set up. This brings us to our GitHub page where we can scroll down and click on Docker Hub. We're going to spin this up in a Docker container. And then if we scroll down to here, we can see it gives us a Docker run command but we're gonna set this up with a Docker Compose file. So let's SSH into our server and start getting things set up. Now I'm storing my Docker config and compose files in this location, shared Docker and organized in their own directories just so it's easier to back up. Now we're gonna create a directory here just for AdGuard, CD into it and then start creating our compose file. All right, and we're gonna use this docker run command to help us build this compose file. So let's get these next to each other. And we can see the first thing we might wanna set is the name here. So container underscore name. Then we can set the restart policy. And we have some volume bind mounts to make. Then next we have a bunch of ports to set up. So we'll get those set. Now on this port, we're gonna run into a conflict because Open Media Vault and a lot of other Linux distributions are already using port 53. So it's gonna cause a conflict. I'm gonna set it up just like this so we can run it, get the error message, see what it looks like, and then we'll fix it after the fact. So we got port 53, we're gonna press Control D to duplicate the line and then put a slash UDP. And then we're going to continue setting up the rest of these ports here. Here's another port that's going to cause a conflict because Open Media Vault's already using port 80 for the Open Media Vault user interface. So we're going to change this to 8085. We might have a conflict with port 443 as well. I'm not sure. We're going to leave it for now. And then if we have to change it, we will. Then we set our image and we'll control S. Now, like I said, we're definitely going to run into a conflict with port 53, might also with 443. The rest of these ports should be fine. And some of these you might not even need to add. Down here explains what they do. The bare minimum that you would need would be port 53, the forward for 80, and port 3000. So we could spin this up just with those three. But again, let's, let's try this. We'll get the error and then we'll fix it. Okay, so you can see this message down here. It's saying port 53 is already in use. And it's not going to allow us to run this container as long as that conflict exists. So we need to fix it. Let's go back into our compose file. And there's going to be multiple ways that you can fix it. This is what I think the easiest way is. We're going to bind this to the specific IP address of the server. And we'll control S and this will work now. Another good way you could work around this conflict is by creating a Mac VLAN in Docker. And then this container would get its own separate IP address. It's a little more complicated to set up. And I would like to keep things simple for beginners. Of course, we could always make a video on setting up Mac VLANs in the future. But just to get this thing spun up as quickly as possible, this is the easiest way to work around it. Now, the third option would be you can start 
changing configuration of systemd resolve and change your resolve.conf file. You can completely turn systemd resolve off. That I so much wouldn't recommend. I think fixing this in Docker itself instead of on the host OS is going to be the best way forward. This is what I would recommend. We'll control Q and then we'll try to spin this up again. Now we can see it started without error. We'll try to access it in our browser. Type in the IP address of the server. And to set it up, we need to use that port 3000. And here we're greeted with the welcome message from AdGuard. Now we're not going to change anything here. Remember, we are using port 8085 for our web interface, but that's not what AdGuard actually sees. It sees the internal port for the container. So we're just going to leave this all as is. Click next, and then we're going to create the username for ourselves and a password. Now this is information on how to set up your other devices on your network to use AdGuard Home. We're going to just skip past this for now, and then we're going to click on Open Dashboard. However, it's going to take us to Open Media Vault because that's what is in use on port 80. We just need to change this port to 8085, and here we are with AdGuard Home. Let's log in. And here's our dashboard. Now we don't have any devices using it yet. I'm going to just quickly configure this desktop to start using this for its DNS requests. Click refresh and you can see some requests are being made. Now we're not going to go over every single setting in AdGuard Home. There's just too much to cover. I'm just going to go over some of the more common things that I like to set up and change. So we'll head to settings and then to DNS settings. And this is where we can set our upstream DNS servers. By default, it's using the AdGuard one. And one of the other ones that I like to use is going to be the Mulvad. So if we click down to there, we would just copy this and paste it in on a new line. And you can put as many in here as you want. This is a good list. It gives you different protocols you can use. But those two are pretty good ones and are well regarded in terms of privacy. And then if you want to create some fallback ones like Google or Cloudflare, you can do that down here. That's what I would generally recommend. And we can click apply test upstreams. That'll check to make sure every single one of those is in fact working. And if it's not, it'll give us a message and let us know which one isn't working. But that's what I would set here. You can see Tons of other options you can go through on your own leisure, but generally the defaults there are going to be fine. Now you can also set client settings. So as you get requests, you can set up specific settings for different clients. You can name your clients, but generally I don't do anything in here other than to name them so that I can more easily identify them in the dashboard. And then you can also use AdGuard Home for your DHCP, but your router is already likely taking care of that, so I wouldn't use it for that feature. Over here under filters, this is where you can set up what block lists are actually being used. By default, it's just the AdGuard one. But if you wanted to add block lists, you could click on that and then choose from list. And you have a whole host of options you can choose from here. I don't know enough about all these different options, so I'm not going to go over them. But if you wanted to learn more about any of these particular lists, you can just click on the home button. That should take you to a home page or a GitHub page or some type of page that has more information on that particular block list. But generally, I would just use the ad guard and add away and click check for updates. And that's pretty much it. Now, another thing that I do like to use ad guard home for is DNS rewrites. So in here, we can set specific domains to go to different IP addresses. And one that I like to use is home.lan. And then we type in the IP address of our server. And what that's going to do for us right now is when we type in home.lan, it's going to take us to our Open Media Vault user interface. So that's really nice. 
in the future when we set up nginx proxy manager we can use adguard and that in order to create these internal domain names for all of our different services so we can have like pertainer.lan, healthchecks.lan, dazzle.lan, and those will all take us right to our services just by using those internal domain names. And again, there's plenty of other options that I'm skipping over, but these are the more common things that you're going to want to do in AdGuard Home. Mainly it's here to block ads across our network. Again, you'll need to set up your devices to actually use it. And this is the page that's going to give you the information on how to change your different devices to use AdGuard Home. The easiest way is probably to set your router to use AdGuard as your DNS, but you can also individually set all your devices to use it as well. Here it'll give you information on how to do it with Android, Windows, iOS. It tells you how to set your DNS for each of those devices. But that's going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching, and you have a nice day. All right, and in this section of the video, I'm going to add AdGuard Home to our dashboard and to our monitoring system, just like I do with all of our services. So I'm going to click on Dashi. We'll click on the interactive editor, and we'll add a new item here. And this should have a Home Lab icon. And we'll type in the IP address of the server and the port for this. And click Save. Save to disk, and we'll test it. And it is working. And then next, we'll add AdGuard Home to our monitoring service. So we'll CD to our home folder, go to Scripts, and then open our monitoring script. And we'll just add AdGuard Home to it. That's what we name the container. Control S, Control Q. And then we'll open Health Checks and add it there as well. Add Check, AdGuard Home. And we'll run our script to make sure it's working. And we get the green check mark and a fresh ping. We are all good. Okay, again, thank you for watching. You have a nice day.